This story is an example of what um, is sometimes called an urban myth, which means it's a, it's a current story. It's a, it's a story that has been composed today. It doesn't always sit easy with traditionalists, but they're good. And it's called The Gift Fairy. Marge. Now, she had led a good life. She always fed the birds. She voted Tory. And she visited her son once a week. It was quite a nice jail. She'd always been kind to her cat and to her late husband, God rest his soul. She'd been faithful to him. Except with the plumber. And the coalman. In fact, Marge was your average salt-of-the-earth senior citizen. So, of course, her name went with all the other salt-of-the-earth senior citizens into the draw for the annual Christmas fairy wishes. And surprise, surprise, her name came up on the fairyland computer. Marge. So there was Marge on Christmas Eve, sitting with her cat in front of a single bar electric fire in a council flat, when... Poof! Flash of light and a puff of smoke. Bloody smoke, said the fairy, waving it from her eyes as she stepped out of it. Now she was a fairy past her prime. Both she and her silver tights had seen better days. Who are you? said Marge. Well, who do you think I am? I'm the bloody Christmas fairy, aren't I? come to give you your two wishes. Two? said Marge. I thought wishes came in threes. Not under this bloody government, they don't. Think yourself lucky you got two, dearie. Now can we get on with it? I've got a date with a gnome, and gnomes don't like being kept waiting. Well, pondered Marge. Oh yes, nearly forgot. No cash prizes, said the fairy. Not since the lottery. Then she stood tapping her wand impatiently against her laddered tights. Well, said Marge, brow wrinkled in thought. Then she brightened suddenly. You know what I'd really like? That's what I'm here to find out, dearie, said the fairy. Or what I'd really like is to be young and beautiful again. Wouldn't we all, said the fairy. You know, said Marge, like those girls on Bay something. Baywatch, that's it. Like one of those girls on Baywatch. <sighs> oh, dearie, I'm not sure we can manage that, said the fairy, eyeing Marge with some doubt. And she took her mobile phone from the waistband of her tights and dialed a number. Listen, I've got this old boiler down here wants to be another Pamela Anderson. Can we do that? We can only do it for a year. She turned to Marge. They can only do it for a year, dearie, she said. Marge shrugged. Well, that's better than nothing. She'll go for it, the fairy told her mobile phone, then stuck it back in the waistband of her tights. Right, hang on, she said. Wave the wand. Poof! Flash of light, puff of smoke. Bloody smoke, muttered the fairy. And when she had waved it away, there in the chair sat not the saggy, baggy, wrinkled Marge, but the most gorgeous Marge imaginable. A Marge who leapt to her feet like she hadn't leapt for forty years to admire her fabulous self in the mirror. Is that all me? she said. No, dear, some of it's cellulite, said the fairy. Not a little jealous of this transformation. Now can we have your second wish, she said. Well, Marge didn't know what else she could wish for. And at that very moment her eyes lit on her old tomcat. Now that cat had been her only companion for ten long years. She loved that cat more than anything else. She turned to the fairy and simpered, Could you could you turn my cat here into into a handsome young man? A sort of prince. Oh, princes are easy, said the fairy. We do princes all the time. Stand back. The fairy screwed her eyes up tight and waved her wand towards the cat. Poof! Flash of light, puff of smoke. Bloody smoke, said the fairy. And there, instead of a cat, stood this really hunky young prince, beaming at Marge with his bright eyes and perfect teeth. Marge.
Marge gave a gasp. Thomas, she cried. That's me, said the cat. Marge flung her arms about the young man's neck and planted a kiss upon his mouth, and they stood there, hugging. <laughs> I'm off, muttered the fairy. Some people just can't wait, can they? And with just an echo of bloody smoke, she was gone, leaving Marge in the arms of a handsome young prince. Now he was obviously a bit of a poet, probably goes with a job. For as he held the luscious Marge and nibbled her ear, he whispered softly into it, Thank you for making a man of me. Now you're ready for the bedroom, I can see. But I think, my dear, you're about to regret the day you took me to see the vet. 